During lab, today I saw a capacitor and after that a transducer. Capacitor and a transducer. Oh, makes a nice combination, na? So come, let's go and explore things about it. This is Siddharth Saratka and welcome back to your own channel, Explore Electronics. So our today's topic is capacitor transducer. But let me tell you that you must have a basic knowledge of capacitors and transducers before starting the lecture. So I have made the videos on both the topic. Go fast and have a brief idea about it. Otherwise your whole lecture would be So let's begin. Capacitors converts the value of the displacement of the capacitor plate or change in pressure through an external force, maybe a human contact or air pressure in terms of frequency, then it is said to be a capacitor transducer. We can classify that capacitor transducer as nothing, just a variable capacitor. Now your next question would be how? So please give me few moments in the upcoming slides you would know that how I am saying it as a variable capacitor. Before going on to that, you must be familiar with the formula of capacitance. C is equals to epsilon naught epsilon r A by D, where A refers to the cross section of the plate and D refers to the distance between the plate and epsilon r is the relativity dielectric constant. Okay, this is how a capacitor transducer look like. Now coming on to the diagram, as you can see, it has a static plate, an insulating material, rear cavity termination, and the important part of the diagram, the deflecting diaphragm. So whenever the external force or pressure is given on the diaphragm, it tends to move inside, due to which the distance between two plates get decreased. And according to the formula, C is equal to epsilon naught epsilon r A by D. Capacitance is inversely proportional to the distance between the plate and the capacitor would act as a variable capacitor. And I think I have cleared your how which was generated in the last slide. Further, we can derive that change of capacitance as a response and change that response into different types of output using into different systems by using different types of instruments available in our electronics world. Before moving ahead to pros and cons, we must come to know about the factors of changing capacitance. Let's talk with them in detail. So first is Mr. Dielectric Constant. As the change in dielectric constant will lead to change in capacitance. This principle is used for measurement of level in hydrogen containers where the change in level of hydrogen between the two plates result in change of dielectric constant of the capacitance transducer. Apart from this, it can be used for measurement of humidity, moisture content, etc. Moving towards point number 2, changing area of plates. This is used in torque meter, which is used for measurement of torque on the shaft. This thing comprises of sleeves that has teeth cut axial and the matching shaft which has similar, similar teeth at its periphery. Now stepping on towards third step, changing distance between the plates. This concept is used for measurement of the displacement of the object in which one plate of the transducer is kept fixed while the other is connected to the object. Here, when the change in the capacitance is measured easily and it's calibrated against the input quantity which is displacement. Quantities like velocity, pressure and acceleration can be measured through it. Now coming on to the advantages that why why should we use you instead of all others? So, I have explained you the 7 good qualities of a transducer in the lecture of transducer. So, capacitors, capacitor transducer has worked out on many conditions like good linearity, high sensitivity, repeatability, etc. Moreover, it provides us low hysteresis and good resolution. If you don't know about low hysteresis or high hysteresis, the hysteresis curve, so let me know in the comment section below, I may take over the topic where there is a will, there is a way and when we come on to the way, we go through some of the disadvantages of capacitor transducer. First is high impedance output which means 
we are not getting a high output neither a low output it is somewhere in the middle which is not useful enough for us to calculate or take into consideration next is point number 2 the temperature sensitivity as it could be operated in a certain temperature range and after that the device will collapse means if you will go for a higher temperature experiments it won't be able to operate there point number 3 explains as the need of complex electronics as more numbers of resistors capacitors and circuits are used to go through that point point number 4 dirt may vary the output as a little amount of dirt may change the sensitivity of the response so make sure you bath every day and your output response does not delay or decay like a capacitor transducer so that people could interact and be attracted by you okay it was just used to relate two things i hope now you can relate better now let's go through the uses of a capacitor transducer it is used in position sensor to monitor the position of an object accelerometer accelerometers force applied on the object and proximeter sensor as explained you in your earlier slides and concluding all these things we come to know that it is a very important thing in our day to day life as you cannot see by your eyes but it is used in your instruments which you are using day to day just like bikes cars or any other electronic equipment or gadget so guys that's all for today if you learned anything new then don't forget to like the video and for more interesting stuff please subscribe my channel and if you want me to take any other topic under my section then let me know in the comment section below until that till the next video bye bye